the real estate biz is drastically changing. And modern real estate success can't be learned in some old course manual. This is everything they never told you about real estate. Where industry leaders expose secrets to success, contemporary lead generation, and how to dominate social media. All moderated by your host, the real estate goat and queen of social media, Carrie Silve. Welcome. I'm your host, Carrie, and I am joined with a very special guest today. Um, we've worked closely together for years. Her name is Elisa Goldhawk, but her friends know her as Midge. She was also on Love It or List It Vacation Homes. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Well, hello, Hi, darling. Elisa. Hi, Hi darling. Midge. How are you? <laughs> I just love you. Your energy is intoxicating. I, I I have so much fun with you. I miss you. I haven't seen you since before I COVID, know. which is I know. a shame. I know. Look what COVID has done to us. It's uh, destroyed. It's I time know. for it's time to get some drinks on. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so the name of my podcast is Everything They Never Told You About. Well, there's Real a lot of that. So let's, yeah, let's uh, dive right in. What do you think is the most important thing that thing that everybody left out when you entered the uh, real estate industry? Um, I would say one of the most important things that was left out, you know, when we go through our classes and then we sign up at our brokerage is the legalities of stuff. Right. And the consequences of uh, the legalities, I think, you know, the, our number one, 15 years in the game now, you learn very quickly, or some of us do, that our main goal here is to, number one, to protect our clients. Right. And number two, to protect your own ass. And they don't teach you that. They don't teach you that in ARIA, like the massive consequences that come along with not being able to do that. So the legal, the, the legal elements of the agreement of purchase and sale, how they can affect you and, you know, the, the steps that you have to take. I don't think, I don't think, you know, many agents are, are, that come out the gates really know. And I think that's why we see this day and age, you know, uh, these whimsical, uh, you know, uh, you get an offer and there's no deposit and, you know, the agent and the client automatically thinks that they're out of it because there's no deposit delivered. Um, legally, you know, and I'm just using that as an example. A lot of agents think that's the case. Mm -hmm. And they don't really read the agreement, understand the legality complexities of it. And I think that's why we see a lot of bullshit that goes on in the market now. Mm -hmm. Speaking of getting sued, can we talk about this for a second? Have you ever been sued? No, never. No. Okay, I have. Have you? Do you want to talk well, about it? A surprise. <laughs> I'd have never fucking thought. Oh my goodness! <laughs> how, did, how did it come about for you? So it's it. Okay, so um, I'm actually in the middle of a lawsuit right now. Get this story. I'm everybody's gonna love this story. So I had a listing up, and we had about it was up for a few months, and this was about I want to say four years ago. And this older woman came through. She came into every one of our open houses, met the entire team. Everybody knew who she was. Um, and she was a, I'm talking award winning REMAX agent, <laughs> but retired. Okay. So she's retired and she wants to purchase this home for herself. And she came through about four open houses put an offer in um, after she came through again with her lawyer and her contractor. She wanted to put in a firm offer and she wanted to lowball it and she lowballed the hell out of it. And my sellers wanted to sell at the time. So she didn't have representation. So of course um, my team double ended. I didn't personally, um, but my team did. Oof. And I think I can see where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So after she moved in, um, a couple days after, uh, 
she called me and said that there was a flood in the basement. Okay. And I sent my contractor there, who was my boyfriend at the time, and he was trying to figure out what was happening. And he he thought that she just turned the sump pump off. Um, but turns out this went on and on. And um, she's suing the obviously the owners of the home. Um, they they never disclosed any any water issues or flooding issues. In fact, the basement was all redone. It was beautiful. You could eat off the floors in there. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, uh, of course we're real estate agents. So the lawyers always recommend that they sue the real estate agents because we have insurance, right? right. And we're the easiest to get the money out of in my opinion. So of course they sued me as well. And, um, her claim is that even though I had her sign a 127 initial cross out of a home inspection, and she had been a realtor for 30 years, an award-winning realtor, that I took advantage her of her and told her not to put an inspection condition in. So, so that is so, so we're going so through is it there right any now. Paper on that where it was like, no, don't get an inspection. Or any paper trailer that? No. No, mm -hmm. no, I, I, and, and she left out, she left out the fact that she was an award-winning realtor for 30 years to her lawyer. So, she should so have that was better herself. interesting. Now, was she represented as a client or a, a client or yeah. a customer agreement? Yes. As a client. Okay. Uh, client, client. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a... Double ending is a sticky situation. Never done it. You know, and I've never done it and I never do do it just simply because of that reason. Cause there are so many gray areas, um, you know, fiduciary duties mm -hmm. are owed to both parties, which is an impossibility. Um, that's why if you, you know, you, you, if you are going to double end, you, you put them on a, 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 a customer agreement, then, you know, the fiduciary yeah. duties come out of it, obviously. And then your allegiance is just your original, yeah, your original client. I've never done it just simply because of the gray areas and the issues that it can bring up. Yeah. You better know your shit and you better know, and you better have a paper trail as long as your left leg, if that's something that you're going to take on. Personally, I never have, and I never would. And I actually, if, if someone comes to me and, and wants to work with me, my allegiance is to my client that I've already signed on. I don't know you for jack shit. And uh, I suggest you get your realtor. If you don't know one, I can definitely, you know, uh, refer one to you. Um, but no, it's something I never yeah. tangle with just simply because of that reason, you know? So what do your lawyers say about it? Yeah. My lawyer says it's looking good. We're not, we're not settling, you know, it's, um, everything was done properly. Right. Uh, inquiries were made numerous times, you know, this flooding situation, we don't even know what the cause of it was, you know, what questions there's asked? never been any what questions asked was there flooding claims? to yeah. the homeowners well, and no, they've documented. never. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, documented everything. She is an agent. She knew all the right questions to ask and all the questions she asked were formulated in a written way to the sellers, yeah. right? Just for that reason alone. So it's it's looking good for us. Well, good luck. That and I'm suck. pleased that we're not just settling. I'm, I'm pleased that we're not settling because, you know, in my opinion, this is open and shut. And I wouldn't want to pay a deductible through my insurance because of a situation like this, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah. But you know what? It's I think out good. of every, out of every instance that, that goes on every negative, um, and there's a lot of negative downfalls in real estate, uh, you know, deals not closing on, on offer day. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, there's a lot goes on that, that can knock the winds out of your sales as an agent, but, you learn from each and every one of them instances, right? And you move forward yeah. being more knowledgeable, uh, having more safety checks, um, just having a little bit more knowledge on what to do if something like this occurs down the road. So as long as something is learned, it's a, yeah. it's a shitty situation to go through, uh, being sued, you know, office mm -hmm. not closing. What could I have done? I always question myself, what could I have done to prevent myself from getting to this spot? And I look back, mm -hmm. I dissect, I do a full autopsy, 
And I'm like, ah, next time I'm going to do this. So take that info, learning lesson, move it forward to the remainder of your career. Absolutely. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of agents and they say, oh, if you haven't been sued yet, you just haven't been in real estate long enough. <laughs> I don't know. I've been in 15 years. Unfortunately, and, and I've I've never touched wood. I've never I've never been sued, so I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with God. that statement. So, <laughs> you know, 15 years, I got the gray hair and the bags <laughs> and the wrinkles to show for it. So, and uh, touch wood it's never happened to me. So, maybe I'm just uh maybe I'm just dodging the bullet here, you know. Hope not. No, you're just a fantastic agent. I love it. Oh, listen to you. So, um, Elisa, Midge, why do people call you Midge? Tell me, tell me about that. Midge was, Midge was my nickname given to me from my dad. Uh, so I, I am the youngest of mm -hmm. three. And when I was born, I was mm -hmm. small. I was the smallest out of the family. So it actually started off with Midget. I uh, can't say that word right now, small person. Um, it actually started off as uh, Midget, and then it shortened to Midge the Fridge, and then it just shortened to Midge. So my dad all his life, and all his life called me Midge, never called me Elisa. My mother never called me Midge, mm -hmm. always called me Elisa. So uh, yeah, all my life I've had two names. Mm -hmm. So, And then I just started going by Midge because everyone fucked my name up. Um, it was either Alicia, Eli Elisa is my name and it's Elisha, Eliza, um, Alicia, Elitha, El Lizzie. It was, it was all, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Call me Midge. So that's, right? that's where it comes from. So you have an interesting story. You were the host of Love It or List It Vacation Homes. How long ago was that? Uh, oh my God, that was back now in, uh, I think 2016, I think 2016 or 17. Wow. When was it? Tell me about your experience on the show. Like, oh, it, it, you know what? It was, first of all, how did you, how did I get it? How did I? Yeah. Yeah. I'm honestly like really simple, like a friend of mine. I'd never watched any of these TV shows. I didn't even know. I don't, I don't watch them channels. I only watch like serial killer slasher movies and hauntings. Um, so I never watched any of those shows. So I, I, I had no idea what even they were, but anywho, one day I got a, um, I got a message through Facebook from one of my Facebook friends and it's like, Oh my God, Midge, you would be perfect for this. And it was the actual casting call for the show. And so I click on it. I'm like, what's this? And, um, you know, we're looking for the next host of the Love It or Love, Love It or List It franchise and blah, blah, blah. For looking for real estate agents and designers. And um, I'm like, oh, God, whatever. I've got no chance. You know what I mean? I don't even know what the show is. Like, I'm clueless. Like, what is this shit? Mm -hmm. And um, so then I'm, I, I kind of start looking into what Love It or List It is and you know, HGTV and all that stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is a pretty big deal. Maybe I should take this a little bit more seriously. And, um, and I just kept on all this stinking thinking, right? I'm like, no, why am I going to bother? It's like, you know, like they're not going to, they're not going to pick me. Like, why am I even going to waste my time? Like, oh, fuck that. I'm not doing that. So anyway, I didn't do it. But the deadline to submit your uh, audition reel was like, I think it was like March 15th or something like that. And the deadline was coming up. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like two days before the deadline. And I just got up one morning and uh, I had, I had, you know, last night's makeup on. I looked like Alice Cooper. Like mascara was halfway down my face. I looked fucking horrible. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do a quick video here and I'm going to send it in. So I put my phone up on the kitchen cabinet doorknob and I just start shooting a video. What they asked for was, um, tell us what makes you the perfect host and give us a funny, give us a funny, um, you know, give us some funny experiences that you've had in real estate. And I'm like, fuck that. I haven't had any fun experiences. Um, real estate's real estate, let's be honest. And um, so I, ju I just, I just pressed record and I, I, g I gave them what they needed to hear, not what they asked for. I gave them what they needed to be needed to hear. So anyway, I, I was, you know, my audition, my audition reel was pretty funny. It's like, I'm like a chef Ramsey slash 
uh, Jim Carrey kind of character. Anywho, so I, I give them what I think they need. Um, and I send it off to the casting company and I got a response back within 15 minutes. Oh my God, you're hilarious. You're exactly what we're looking for. And I'm like, wow. Then my, my bum hole started to pucker. I'm like, oh my God, what have I started here? You know, like, <laughs> fuck, what have I done? I started getting really nervous. And um, then it just kind of grew legs from there. I'd done some on-camera auditions here in Toronto. And um, and I think I, I think I think there was like over 200,000 applicants because it was open to the whole of North America. And uh, I got the mm-hmm. call one day and I made it through round one, made it through round two, made it through round three. Yeah. And then I got the call one day and they're like, you're the one. We've chosen you. I'm like, are you desperate? Like, what the ah. fuck is wrong with you? Like, do you have no one else? Like, what? <laughs> like, you must be seriously desperate, You kill me. Yeah. So, that, I mean, and that was it. So, it was, <laughs> it was a long process. Like, the audition, the auditioning was a long process. It was months long, like six months. And then it had to go to, you know, HGTV. It had to go to Chorus. had to go to, uh, you know, to all the powers that be. And um, it was a long process. And... I was just like, you know what, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, whatever. I don't give, you know, whatever. Uh, Never in a million years did I think they'd pick me, but they did. I don't know why. How long were you on the show for? So it was one season (laughs) because we were all over the place. We were flying all over like BC and we were up uh, the Muskokas. So for for like eight months, like I was barely home. Like it was, it was hard that Mm -hmm. way because we were always flying out. Um, so it was like eight months, nine months of filming. And then it was another three months of, um, you know, marketing the show. And so marketing pieces and voiceover stuff. And, um, yeah, so, and, and it, it only, unfortunately it didn't get renewed, uh, for season two. And I think it's cause it was such an expensive show to run because, we were you know flying out whoops flying out here and there the whole crew flying out cameraman you you know so it was a it was an expensive show to run um and so yeah unfortunately only went for one season yeah okay so do you think in your opinion it was that these shows are realistic uh as to what actually happens in real estate in our industry. I can't I can't speak your show. I, yeah, I can't speak to the other shows. Um my show. So people always ask, you know, was it scripted? Is those shows are so scripted, blah, blah, blah. It was not. It was all, and that was one of the hardest things about it, is that you do, you know, three, four shoots for the same line and you try and pick different lines every time and, you know, make it entertaining. So it wasn't scripted. Uh realistic. So the prices, yeah, the prices were realistic at the time because um, I get all the information on homes that I was showing and I actually had to research the information. Mm-hmm. So the realistic part of it, you know, the, the homes that we were showing, they were real, they were real prices. Absolutely. The renos that went into the place, they were realistic. That money, you know, that money was, was spent and the renos done. Um, mm-hmm. so when people say, oh, they're all set up and stuff, we don't know that if the homeowners, that us hosts, we don't know if the homeowners are going to love it or list it. Like we, we are surprised at the responses that we filmed, you know, if they said, Oh, we're going to keep it. We never knew. So if it was all pre-planned, it's nothing that they, that they let the host know about because obviously they want that real reaction out of us. Right. So I get it. So I, I can't, I can't say whether it was or whether, it, whether it wasn't, it wasn't for us, you know, uh, it was very real for me because I lost most mm-hmm. times. Um, so, yeah, as, as far as everything, yeah, I lost my ass, let's be honest. Um, everything, um, you know, was, was um, you know, nothing was, because I had to research. I was up till 2, 3 in the morning and then getting up at 5 in the morning to get hair and makeup done, uh, researching the homes that I'm going to be showing and filming for that day, right? One of the hardest jobs I've ever had. Huh. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Oh, it was yeah, it was Okay, hard. so you you already said that you had never watched any of these HGTV shows. Yeah. But have you watched Selling Sunset? No. No. Oh, fuck. Is it that good? I wanted to get your take on 
I don't know if I would call it good. It's entertaining. Yeah. It's very flashy and like bright, shiny objects yeah. and pretty things. Um, I think that's the appeal yeah. to it. But I've heard that they don't even have their real estate license. Probably not. These girls. Probably not. Right? No. They probably don't. And it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't. Right? Oh, you know, uh, what a lot of people think when they when they see reality, you know, reality show, you have to bear in mind that reality show is still entertainment. You have to add entertainment value mm -hmm. in order to grab the viewers, right? Like, honestly, like, think about it. If I'd done a show just following me around as a realtor, as a reality show, people would be asleep in the first two fucking minutes, okay? Because it's boring <laughs> as shit. Um, okay, four minutes, okay? Um, you know, so you have to add... <laughs> You have to add the excitement. You've got to add the pizzazz. You've got to, because you've got to get viewers, right? So it's not a reality as in this is real. It's a reality type production. You know, most of them are mm -hmm. still fake as fuck, but it's a reality structure of a show, right? So no, I don't watch that. Okay, so Again, if, I, if, you... if it was a haunting movie, I'd be watching that. If it's a slasher <laughs> movie, I'd be watching that. Selling Sunset? Not on your ass. <laughs> no. Okay, so if you were going to produce your own reality show, mm. what kind of what would you do? What would, oh, <laughs> tell me what it would be about? <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I've always had I've always had this dream in my head where you know, mm -hmm. take one of those reality shows and mm -hmm. really make it reality. But you wouldn't be able to show it on HGTV or anything. It'd have to be like HBO because it would be it'd be, my, it'd be real, right? It would be me on the phone, you know, dealing yeah. with a the client, then calling you saying, for fuck's sake, you're not going to believe this. You know, it's going to be absolutely real, you know? <laughs> Uh, so I've always had that kind of, you know, almost like a Chef Ramsay type real, real estate show. But again, you couldn't. And I'd be very good at that because right? I swear probably more than Chef Ramsay. Um, but that would be my, uh, you know, I've always imagined like a Chef Ramsay type uh, re real estate show. Like really show people what the fuck goes on, Ooh. you know. That would that would be my idea of a show. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So let's shift the topic to pop the topic a little bit. Let's talk about the market right now. What are you experiencing right now? Because Midge, you're out of Milton, correct? Yeah. So I'm Hamilton down to Niagara. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in Milton right now? Um Markets flat as ourselves. I mean, I know that we, you know, and so I do a lot in, in Peel as well, right? Um, yeah. You know, so, you know, all of Holton and Peel. What am I seeing? Now, I see agents screaming up and down and getting their knickers wet because there was a little bit of a bump from January to February's numbers. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I think some of them numbers, uh, you know, prices have gone up. 100%. We've, we've gone up a bump. But I don't think it's anything to get to, a little, you know, like get our, our knickers wet about just simply because it's not long enough for us to mm -hmm. see a trend. Um, so I don't put too much focus on that. But the, the market right now, I find, I mean, even if we look at February of last, uh, of, uh, last month, the market's awfully flat. Whether the market took a, a little bump up uh, month over month, we have the lowest amount of listings on market. We have the lowest amount of purchases mm -hmm. on market, the lowest in in I, I think in in over twenty years, people just aren't moving. Yeah, they ju people just aren't listing. They are scared to death. Where are they going to go? Why are they? You know, the only sense this market, the only sector that makes sense to me in this market would be downsizes that are mortgage free. Because if you're not mortgage free yeah. and you've got you've got a property and you're like, oh, you know what? I might sell and up, up, get. look at your mortgage rates that you're getting. 
Now, you're eventually going to get caught up in those mortgage rates, yeah. but that depends on when your renewal is. But people aren't just making, a, they're not making a move just based on that, you know? And I don't blame them. So I think the market is flat yeah. as our souls. I don't think it's a fantastic market. Yeah, we had a blip month over month. Yay, pop a beer, then relax your ass. Um, I think we got to see what happens in the spring market and, um, you know, see what kind of a trend that, that gets to set. Hopefully we've got a good bump in the spring market and revitalize the market a little bit more, but I'm not, I'm not getting all, all crazy and excited over one month's numbers turning out. Yeah. Yeah. I've been feeling movement here in Hamilton. Um, it's a different market than Milton and Peel though. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and where I'm feeling movement is in the lower end of the price range. Right. So like, oh my God, 500, like flying. Yep. So Peel doesn't really have anything in the 500s. No, Peel so is no, not really that affordable. But, but the 500 lower range in <laughs> Hamilton is the 800 lower range in, in, in Peel, right? So, you know, it, it yeah. just balances out. But yeah, I do see that movement. And also, you know, with the properties that are going, um, you know, we've got agents out there too that are still using the price it aggressively. And hey, great, whatever works. Um, you know, and then getting two, 300 over asking. Mm -hmm. So we have seen multiple offers as well um, in the past month. Um, but what I find is the properties that are really like turnkey and, you know, hate to mm -hmm. use the old crappy real estate word, showstoppers, um, <laughs> I find they are the ones that, are you know, that fly off the market pretty quick. The yeah. mediocre homes, just the your ones that need, need work. They're the ones that are sitting, but I've never seen the amount of terminated price change relisted, suspended ever in the amount than what I have, um, in these past months. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So <clears throat> how did your, how did your real estate business get affected by COVID? Because I've been talking to so many people. I know about how it affected my business. My business was basically run, um, through my social life. So for me, it kind of just fucked everything up, right? Yeah. How did COVID affect your business? And have you been able to shift back to pre-COVID? Um, well, I don't think there is a pre-COVID pre in the, the context that we don't have a, you know, everyone's not scared and still wearing a mask. But I mean, as far as you know, interest rates, we're, we're still not pre-COVID, right? But if we if we look at you know, with the, with the flu that went round. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm lucky because mine, mine wasn't, um, you know, I am a social person, but I'm not like, you know, you're like a social butterfly. You were out every weekend and living it up. I'm not that I'm, I, I'm too, <laughs> I'm too fucking old, sweetheart. I'm in bed by, by 10, 10, 11 o'clock. No, you're not. I used to drag you out too. Right, so. right. But, 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 but here's the word drag. You had to drag me out because this bitch didn't want to go. She was tired. Um, Oh my God. Yeah, so COVID, I think COVID affected everyone, obviously. Um, but then when, when the FOMO mm. started to kick in um, with the buyers and, and there was money just being given away, right, um, by the banks, you know, I, I, I had great business through COVID. I'm not going to lie. Um, the interest rate, high, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was, it was great, right? Because I do a lot of social media, right? So I, I you know, and, and staying in touch with my sphere and, and stuff like that. So I had great business through COVID where I've uh, now, now, you know, we're, we're done with COVID hopefully. Um, yeah. These interest rates have affected my business uh, more than what the pandemic did. Yeah. During the pandemic, there was free yeah. money. I, now we're here after the pandemic and you're giving up your firstborn to get a mortgage, you know? So my, you know, right. my business is more affected with today's climate than it was during COVID. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, I feel like at the first six months of COVID, I was, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to make any moves. I didn't want to sell any real estate. 
because do you remember that whole um, atmosphere of where everybody was scared and agents were being called greedy? Yeah. And <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like oh, terrified. Yeah. And I... I run my business on social media, so it's not like I could be back in this on the yeah. sidelines doing business. Everybody would know if I was fucking gangbusters, yeah. right? Yeah. So I I kind of laid low for the first six months. I didn't want to yeah. touch and it. And it was tough, right? Because your messaging had to change, right? So, you know, it's not the usual um, messaging that we would do. And it's like COVID hit and it's like, oh, fuck. What a <laughs> what do we do? You know? So it was a little bit of a, a pivot that we all had to take because, yeah, you you go put a great market right now. Everyone's calling you a fucking granny killer. <laughs> You're killing I know, grandma. Right? You know, it's like, whoa, fuck, I'm just saying it's a great market. You know, so there was the optics. The optics were so strong. And it's like, yeah. okay, you know what? I'm just going to put my mask on in this corner and uh yeah you fuck all <laughs> she didn't make a move well <laughs> you're you're very active on social media i find i'm getting a lot of pushback from you know who knows if they're even real people that are commenting on all my posts but anytime i say anything positive about the market the trolls come out it's like the market's going to crash. You're responsible for these people losing their, you know, retirement. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. what the yeah. fuck? Like yeah. I, everybody's so like sensitive and you're, I I'm, I'm tiptoeing around. I, well, I used to be tiptoeing around. I don't right. give a fuck anymore. Right. I don't so care you, anymore. You know, there's, I'm going to do what's right for my business yeah. and I, I'm not going to advise people to do something unless I would do it the, myself. That's how I'm gauging my right. advice. I, I can sleep at night because yeah, if I say, Hey, you know, we're at the bottom right now in my personal opinion. So I'm going out and buying some houses. I'm really going to go out and buy a fucking house. Yeah. Right. So like, you've got, you've got, you've got not, two different types of market, people. right? So you've got the bearish market and you've got the bullish market, right? And if you are, you mm -hmm. know, in the bullish crowd, then you're going to raise the hackles of the bearish crowd. And if you're in the bearish crowd, you're going to raise the hackles of the bullish crowd. So no matter what, you're not going to please everything. Listen, everyone, this, this, is, this is what I found out uh, about social media and even being on national TV. And, and this, our, our show went, you know, to Europe. I was, you know, it went all around the world. So... You know, I get messages from Portugal yeah. from dirty old men wanting pictures of my feet. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? My, my feet are fucking <laughs> ugly. I got bunions. Relax. Um, you know, and I'm like, how am I getting these messages from Portugal? Because the show was shown there. Anyway, whatever. So I think, you know, and what I learned very early in the game, being, being on TV and being on social media is, if you're going to put yourself out there, okay, which we do in social media because it's a huge part of our business, mm -hmm. You have got to be cognizant of the fact that you are not going to be everyone's cup of tea, you know? So we have a lot of agents, right, that use social media for their business, but they are very, they're, they're on ice. Um, they're always trying to placate 100% of the crowd. And I got news for you, 100% of the crowd, 50% are going to think you're a twat, and the other 50% are going to like you, okay? So just tailor your message to the 50% that likes you. Don't, you know, so I learned that real quick. Some of the comments I got when I was on TV was just heinous. Like people hated me, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm quite a nice person. Um, but I don't. That's how it is. <laughs> when you put yourself out there, you are going to take. You're gonna. You're gonna take. Mm -hmm. You're gonna take the rap for that. Um, so I have that same mentality. Fuck ya. Yeah. You either like me or you don't. And if you don't like me, I'm probably am never going to work with you anyway. So. Why do I give a shit? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think you tailor your message to your yeah. tribe and you speak to the people that are listening to you and ignore the trolls that have nothing else to do other than type away on their keyboard, right? You take control of your business. Yeah. You take control of your messaging. You don't allow the trolls to do it because if you allow that, you are never going to be yourself. And that is the problem with a lot of agents when they use social media, video marketing. Uh, they're always trying to act like someone that they're mm -hmm. not 
to appease 100% of the crowd, and that is a very, very, very hard job to do, is to act as someone else all the time. Yeah. Oh my God. You know what we should do? We're going to do, we're going to, we're going to record a video next time, Elisa. And we're going to do, um, do you know the episode, a celebrity's reading tweets? Oh my God. Yeah. We're going to do a yeah. version of that. We're going to yeah. do a version I should, of that. So I, I do, I do a podcast, right. With, with, uh, with my friend JJ and our, yeah. our podcast, we all, we talk about, you know, current events, news, real estate stuff. And then we always finish it with something a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit funny. And so that was one of our things that we were going to retweet to responses to certain posts. Ah, oh, some of the ones I got was just like nasty. I'm like, my ass ain't that big, is it? Um, oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, that'd be funny. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. We should definitely do that. So you're obviously a, a huge personality. People know who you are. Um, you're utilizing social media in your business. Uh, would you? What percentage of your prospecting methods um, would you say that social media is? And also, what are the other forms of prospecting that you're doing in your business? Um, so yeah, social media is a huge part. So I would definitely say that it's a good 50%. Um, I think it's one of the most mm -hmm. uh, easiest ways to get your message out there. I look at social media as a database, uh, not something to sit there and scroll mm -hmm. and read and waste time on, um, you know, every night for a couple of hours. It's a database. It's a free database. Use it as such. Get your message out, bring in your tribe, talk to your people. Um, so for me, it, it, it's, it's a good percentage because I've always believed in video, video, video. So people can get to feel, see, smell, sniff who you are. They get a really good idea of who you are and, you know, if they'd like to work with you down the road, whereas a, a, a static post written post doesn't give you that. So I'm a massive, massive fan of video. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, about 50% of mine, it comes from social media, but I'm one of these two that. I don't know if you notice, but I can talk a lot. So I love <clears throat> going out and door knocking. I love sit, standing and chatting with people. I, really? I love it. I, I do. I really enjoy it. Um, and I know people say, oh, it's a waste of time. I love it. I love getting out there and, and shooting the shit with people. Yeah, the market's great. Hey, look, I live, I live around the corner. Summertime, I'm always out there drinking beers on the driveway like a bummer. Um, you know, so it's a great way for me to to connect with my community right um yeah so i love door knocking yeah. um you know i i do um social media so i do do some online leads as well online lead generation and again opportunity jump on the phone chat with people um you know i and i'm not saying that that's the right thing to do but you know when you're a realtor and mm -hmm. you're and you're prospecting and you and, and you're trying to build your business you know that you it's a pie right as prospecting and, and building your business is a mm -hmm. pie and there's many slices to that pie. Uh, so I just don't think you can rely on the one thing a hundred percent of the time. You've got to get out there and try other things, see if they work for you, see if that's your, your, your niche. Um, but I will say stick to what you're good at. If you're good at video, yeah, stick and to video, that's going to be your main thing. Uh, if you're good at door knocking, get your lazy ass out and door knock because that's your thing, right? Um, and it will yield, uh, it will yield, you know, business may not be today, tomorrow, next month, but down the road. You know, uh, I've been talking to a few newer agents and they're having a lot of, um, positive experiences door knocking right yeah. now. Yeah. I think this is what I think. I think that door knocking is making a comeback right now because everybody misses the personal one-on-one -on -one. as long as you are a neighbor or you know you're not just some guy in a suit that is unapproachable. I think it's making a comeback. Oh, I really so, do. Yeah. Whoever's really listening do. and you know what? The amount of people, people are done with this, not being able to talk to someone. We had two or two and a half years of mm -hmm. COVID where, you know, we didn't speak to anyone. We locked ourselves up. You know, people want to talk. So if you're knocking on the door and you're giving something of value, 
you know, you're not just there wasting people's time. You are giving something of value and you're having a nice chat with them along the way. I mean, I, I, it's beautiful, right? I mean, people are yearning for that. People want information and people want the human connection. Eye to eye, belly to belly has always been one of the best mechanisms for me to prospect and to garner, to garner business. Yeah, I agree. I've always been social media since the beginning of my career, like 13 years. I've, I've just been social media and I do really well at it, but it's not for everybody, no. right? Well, social here's the difference. Running you, social media, you grew up media with it, right? You, you, that was your generation. Yeah. My generation, I'm like, I'm not putting a picture on there. Everyone can see it. You know, so there's a generational, <laughs> right? And it's true. So it took a long time yeah. for me to be like, you know, put this stuff on social media and, you know, because you're, you're almost a little bit scared with it. You think that people are actually can see through the computer screen and, 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 and see you picking your nose there as, you, as, as you're eating your tater chips. Um, you know, so it, it takes a lot to, to put your life out there on this thing called the internet that we really didn't understand what it was. So it's a generational thing. Um, but once you figure out that it's not mm -hmm. going to jump out and bite you and, you know, you got to be cautious on it, but for the most part, if you're running it for your business, um, yeah, no matter what age, get on it. But for you, your generation, yeah, you've always been on it because it's what you've always been used to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't want to have to do cold calling or door knocking. So I just, I built my business through social media. Yeah. Um, and obviously through my SOI and socializing, I, I, I don't want, like, I got to say that that was probably for the first five years where 90% of my business came from. It takes a, that's what people don't realize. Social media isn't a quick fix just because you can get a quick message out through video mm -hmm. to thousands of people instantly. You still like, I believe that you, social media as prospecting is a part-time job. You're going to spend part-time hours doing it. Yeah. It, creating content, posting content. Yeah, it is part and, of your yeah. work model. It's fucking work. It's part of your work model. Yeah. Um, and and hundred percent. So, you know, you've just nailed it there. You get you you get a majority of your business from social media and socializing. They're the two things you're good at, right? So that's what you do. But when you when you start, you've yeah. got to kind of try everything to figure out what is your cup of tea and what are you most comfortable to do? Because if you're not comfortable doing video or social media, I got news for you. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to force yourself to do it. But if you love getting your ass yeah. out and door knocking, as soon as that sun breaks, boom, you're out the door like a scolded rat. So, you know, you've got to try everything and figure oh, out right. what <laughs> works for you. Who are you and what, what is your strength? Right. So you've got to play to your strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I love that. So tell me a little bit, Midge, you have your own podcast. Tell me about your podcast. Uh, so, yeah. So this is a new thing. We've only been doing it about a month, but oh my God, it's so much fun. Like I always, I always said like when people are like, you should do a podcast, should do a podcast. I'm like, I don't even know what a fucking podcast is. Um, so, and now I love them. Right. I'm like, I am. I look kind of like this podcast. Thing. I know. So I'm kind of getting a little addicted. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm like the next female Howard Stern. Why not? I can have guys on my show getting naked rather than Howard Stern for years having chicks on there getting their tits out. <laughs> I can be the one for the women. Um, so, anyways, we start right. this podcast. So, my partner in crime, um, JJ, he's a wholesaler. And I'm in re resale. So we're like, let's do a podcast and kind of, you know, give information to people about the market, both markets, so resale. And so that's what we do. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a pretty easygoing podcast. We start off with some funny news segments, you know, crazy shit that goes on in the world today. Um, always uh, gives people a laugh in the clown world. Um, and then we go into the meat and potatoes of it, which is, you know, the real estate segment on it. And then we kind of venture off into, I think, we shot we shot one yesterday and finished off with dad jokes, which mm -hmm. JJ's dad jokes are pretty pathetic. Uh, but anyway, it gives people a laugh. So our main goal is information and you leave us with a smile. You leave us with a smile because, my God, the world needs it right now. 
So uh, it's the Midge and JJ Real yeah. Talk podcast and uh, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, all the channels. You can, you can, you can get us on there. That was a dirty plug, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> what a, what a, pl- what a, what a plug, whore. <laughs> That's okay. I love you. I will promote anything you're doing every day, all day. I just adore oh, you, man. Oh, my darling. Oh, oh, geez. Do you have any? Oh, I got a good question. I'm actually doing an article on this. I've just, you know, I write for yeah. Buzz Buzz every yeah. month, right? So I've this month I decided to do it on all the things that I would do differently if I could yeah. go back to day one in this in this yeah. industry. So. What would be yours? What would you do differently if you could go back? Oh, I'd probably uh, put that application into Tim Hortons. <laughs> I'm not even fucking venturing into real estate. <laughs> that's, that's what I'd have done on day one. If I knew what I knew now, on day <laughs> one, I'd be like, I'm the fuck out of here. What? Go do that? Nah. <laughs> See ya. You're making me ugly laugh right now. <laughs> wow, I'd have been at Tim Hortons right now. Double, double. Um, what would? What was the question? <laughs> Fuck. What was it? <laughs> if go you back. could if go I back. back. Knowing what you know now, knowing what you know now about our industry, what would you do differently that wouldn't hopefully make your career? I would have, and and you? this is the truth. I would have started social media earlier. Yeah, yes. I would. I would have started social media earlier. You're so smart. Yeah. yeah. Cause I left it late in the game, right? I only really started using social media when I'd done the show. You know, so I had all those years that I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't even tap into social media because of my generation. I was a little bit scared of it. Um, but that would definitely, that would definitely be the one I would have started social media from day one. That is great advice, Midge. And if, if everybody doesn't know this, that's listening, I'm a social media coach. So you know how to go to contact oh, there's for that. A dirty plug. Dirty plug. Um, <laughs> Right, I had to get it yours. in there, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. And if you could give any advice out there to realtors, let's pick. Um, let's pick those realtors that have been in the game for a long time and are not adapting to uh, the new way of doing business and new technology as much as they would like to, because let's be honest, we've seen the biggest changes in tech to our industry in the last five years that I've ever seen in my lifetime. So what would be your advice to them? To the older folk? Yeah. I think the older you get, the more stubborn you get, right? We all know that. Um, Mm -hmm. And a lot Mm -hmm. of people have the mentality, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. Uh, So the advice I would give to them is make your life easier. Take a few moments out of each and every one of your days. And if you don't understand how a piece of tech works, open up that computer if you have one. Um, Go to that Google bar, do a little search, and do a little bit of self-education because it's amazing what you can learn. Um, Yeah, just learn it. Learn it. There's a lot of stuff that I don't understand. I didn't know about microphones. I didn't know about podcasts. I didn't know about, you know, streaming and all, all that shit at my age. Why would I? Um, I hop on Google. I research it. I am somewhat of a guru now, I would say, after a month. Darn right. Um, there's so much information out there. So really, there is no excuse not to be savvy in technology mm-hmm. this day and age. There is no excuse. And I would put that down to being a little bit lazy. Mm. Stubborn. Lazy. Lazy. Not Do we have learn. any more words for these folks? <laughs> not wanting to learn. <laughs> yeah. You know? Not wanting to learn. Not good. Business, business will move no. along with or without you. You know, so, right? Uh, you better jump you, on that train. You better get on that train, it. or you're gonna be left sitting at the station, thinking, "When's the next one coming?" And the next one ain't coming. 
Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Midge, for like all of your humor. I love your humor. I think you're probably one of the funniest people that I know, to be oh honest. God, people I just are going to probably you. watch this and be like, and all of that your- crazy bitch she's got on? <laughs> and sure. this is what the real estate industry does to you. <laughs> oh, oh no, I was always crazy as a loon. I was, I've always, listen, I, my father was a comedian for all my life. So uh, I didn't just lick this shit up off the floor. I was taught this from a young age. <sighs> yeah. I love it. Um, thank you so much for coming on and let's do this again very oh my soon. God, I can't believe it's almost been an hour already. I know. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye, darlings. <laughs> love you. Thanks for listening to everything they never told you about real estate. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. To connect with Carrie or for more information about her coaching program, check out carriesove.ca or at carriesove and associates on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.